Good planty peeps, my name is Lily and welcome to Peace Lily Plants. Today I'm going to show you guys what are the oldest plants in my collection. Now of course there have been plenty of plants that I've had over the last year or two that have sadly kicked the bucket, gone on to planty heaven due to my underwatering or overwatering or something else. There have been a few plants that have managed to survive in my care for a year or over a year or close to a year. We're about to dive right into it but before we do go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. BT dubs I used to get really annoyed at youtubers who told people to like their video in the beginning. And then one day I was talking to someone about it, and they were like, well, it's because a lot of people don't make it to the end of the video. So, that's why I tell you to like the video before you actually watch it. Uh, hope that's okay. So first up, I'm going to show you a couple of the plants that were really part of the very first plants that I had in my collection. The first foliage plants, because I had a few succulents in the beginning, but these are some of the first actual plant plants, if you know what I mean. And uh, they are from my ex's mom, so at least something survived from that relationship. This is a firecracker aglaonema. Actually, it's so large. Let me back up and show you a better view. So, uh... She's been a trooper. She wasn't doing that great for a while, and then I moved her closer to the sun, and she has been doing a lot better ever since then. So in my personal experience, Aglaonema do enjoy the sun. Really not that much to say. It's a very common, inexpensive plant, which is why it was gifted to me, and it hasn't been all that tough aside from the whole wanting more sun issue and it's just a cute little pop of color with those pink stems so i enjoy this one i don't know if i enjoy it enough that i would go out of the way to replace it if it died but i'm i care enough about it to keep it alive so there we go. Another plant for my ex's mom. I forgot to say this a minute ago, but these were given to me on my birthday in 2020. And right now it's February 2022, so I've had them for about a year and a half. Along with the firecracker aglaonema, I was also gifted this anthurium. It was definitely smaller when I first got it. It just had a few leaves and I'm sure you've all seen it a million times in the big box stores. So you go in and they have just a whole row of simple little plants with these green leaves and some cute little blooms that are different pops of color. This one is supposed to have red blooms. It's never actually bloomed in my care, but it survives and the foliage keeps growing. So that's cool. And yeah, just like the other one, I would say this is a pretty hardy plant. I mean, I've got it in a pot with our drainage hole and I've managed to keep it alive. So that's pretty good. Obviously I can't soak it with water, but I just wait for it to start getting super droopy and give it a little bit of water and it's good to go. And uh, it just kind of blends into the background of the jungle here, but you know, these, uh, these leaf shapes that are kind of heart-shaped are cute. I do appreciate, uh, this plant for what it is, even though it is simple. If it died, I would be willing to get another one, but I would probably get one with a more interesting bloom color, like one with black blooms because that'd be really cool if it ever did bloom. So in my very early plant loving days, I had reconnected with my awesome planty friend and also awesome everything else friend, Joey. And he worked at the big greenhouse in Greensboro at the time. And I went and visited him and I may have gotten multiple plants. I can't quite remember. But, uh, I think this is the only plant that survived from that trip. This is an African violet. 
It's not blooming right now, but it has bloomed many times in the past. It blooms multiple times a year. I love this plant so much. Interestingly, the leaves were all dark green when I bought it, but from pure sun stress, just uh, letting that southern facing sun beat on it for hours, day in and day out, it has formed these uh, pink leaves and the blooms are purple. So very pretty plant. And um, again, a pot without a drainage hole. Maybe you could put together that uh, in my early planty days, I was more willing to use a pot without a drainage hole and now I avoid that like the plague. So a very simple common plant that I love so much that I've had for a long time Hopefully I'll continue to have it for a long time. I will throw out there, it hasn't really gotten that much bigger. It blooms a lot and it does really well, but it's not like it has twice as many leaves as it did when I bought it. So I don't know if I'm violence or kind of slow on growing foliage or if that's just been my experience. So unfortunately, I only have two hands. I'd like to show you three plants at the same time, but I can only hold two of them. So these are two starfish that I bought um, around December 2020. So I've had them for like a year and a couple of months. And this one you see has a baby growing in the pot with it. This one doesn't have a baby, but that shorter strand is new. These do pretty well. They're really easy, really forgiving. I'm gonna try to turn this one so you can see the baby while I'm talking. And I really enjoy them and I enjoy the fact that there's two of them. They're like little twin starfish. I just really appreciate how cool and interesting and unique this plant is. Funny enough, I actually bought one of them for myself and one of them to give as a gift. And then I liked them so much that I just kept them for myself. It happens. Really enjoy these plants and then I'm gonna show you right now the plant that I keep in between them. It's so fitting, you'll see why. This is a Thanksgiving and or Christmas cactus. I don't know the difference, but uh cute little flounder pot this was gifted to me once again no drainage hole but um it is surviving so that's good i see all these little aerial roots poking off of different parts of the plant so i bet i could cut this up and make a bunch of little babies if i wanted to i don't really want to this one actually did bloom a couple months ago so that was exciting um i don't think it was super happy because the blooms looked a little bit misshapen and then they fell off and it was like I don't know, it bloomed, but it didn't seem that happy about it, so I don't know. I really don't know what I'm doing with cacti. We shall see if he'll bloom again. And uh, just a funny side note, I cannot think of the name of this character. And then I looked it up, and it's Flounder. And I'm like, that's such an obvious name. Like, they couldn't have given him any kind of nickname. Just the literal name of what he is. Flounder. I enjoy Flounder, and as I said, I can only pick up two plants at once, but I keep Flounder in between the starfish. Like, one on each side. And it's really cute, because it's a little ocean theme. So the next two are just simple little pothos that were grown off of propagations. In my very early planty days, like I said, I reconnected with Joey and we were sharing this hobby that I had just gotten into plants and he'd been into them for a while. He gave me some cuttings off of his pothos and they are still with us today and that is just one of the coolest things about plants that you can get them for friends and um, 
Then you have your own plant that just came from their plant. This is a Marble Queen that was grown off of cuttings off of Joey's Marble Queen. Looking just a little bit droopy and thirsty, so we'll need to maybe give her a little water today. Once again, no drainage hole. You're seeing the pattern. So many things without a drainage hole. She does fine. Just wait for her to get a little bit droopy and give her a little bit of water. And she perks right back up. And right back there in this pot right here, this neon pothos also came from cuttings from Joey's neon pothos. And just like the Marble Queen, it's in a pot with no drainage. And again, I wait for it to get droopy and then give it just a little bit of water and it perks right back up and they're both so beautiful. Both of those are just so easy and awesome. If you're watching this video and you're not really into plants because I know I have a few really amazing family members and friends who support me and watch my videos even though they don't like plants. Get you a pothos, okay? So we're fast forwarding in time just a little bit because everything I showed up to now was probably um, from about August 2020 to December 2020 is when it came into my care. And then the woods I'm going to show you last here are from uh, March slash April 2021. But since it's February 2022, it's been almost a year. And that's still quite a while to have a plant be in your care and to be able to keep it alive. This is a cute, simple little heart leaf philodendron that I got. And by the way, uh, the ones I'm about to show you, I got at the beach. So not that that matters, but it's just a slightly fun fact. I like that this is well this might sound weird uh, i was about to say i like that it's trailing but then i realized um that doesn't quite make sense i like that the vines are kind of long which sounds weird because it's like i'm saying that i like that it's leggy and usually it's bad if a plant is leggy but i don't know it just looks kind of cute on this one to have the vine and they have the little heart-shaped leaves hanging down. And this vine was growing a lot, but we kept cutting it and propagating it. So it has stopped putting out leaves on that vine. And now it's focusing on putting out this new vine. So even though this plant may seem like it hasn't grown that much, it's been propagated a lot, and even though it's not very long right now, it's getting fuller. I, I've said it a hundred times, and I'm probably going to say it a hundred more times. Hartley philodendron is my favorite plant. And, um, do you see why? It's just so cute. Here is my Elocation Poly that I also got on that trip. And, um... On the one hand, my specimen is not all that special. I mean, there's only like four leaves and then two baby leaves. But the fact that I've kept an allocation poly alive for almost a year is pretty impressive, in my opinion. Um, I really like allocation poly as difficult as it may be, as unrewarding as it may be in a way, because... This plant has never really grown a new leaf. It's just lost one or two. So that's that's not very fun. But I just love how this plant looks. It's so cool looking from the front. And then from the back is even better. This crisping leaf. I hope that uh, that leaf is going to be okay. Because if we lose that one, then it's going to be a really disappointing specimen but you know this is a very common plant that you would easily find in a big box store so not gonna lie if this kicks the bucket i'm definitely driving to lowe's and get me another one even though i know that it's not gonna be that easy it's gonna be finicky might not be that rewarding might die 
still love it. Last plant for today. Last one that I got on that trip. No, that's not the last one. Never mind. I just saw one more. But here's another one that I got almost a year ago. This tiny watermelon peperobia. And I don't know if these are slow growers or if it's just my experience, but this is basically what it looked like when I bought it and it's what it looks like now. Kind of like the Alocasia poly, maybe not the most rewarding plant, but it's so cute. Uh, and there have been a couple times when I thought that it was gonna die because of a couple leaves would start to look not so happy. And you know, if you've tried to take care of Peperomia, it's, they'll be alive one day and um, dead the next day. Every time some of the leaves look bad, I'm like, oh God, is it dying? But it's still with us. So, and look, it's even got a couple little babies trying to have in there. So, uh, as with the Alocasia poly, very common, easy to find plant. I am totally going to get another one of this whenever it dies because it's so cute. I can't not have one of these. So I thought I was about to be done, but then I looked over and I was like, oh wait, I got that weird little cactus on that trip as well. So here's my weird little cactus. We're a little hunched over old man cactus with his his white hair. He really does look like a funny little old man. I don't know, part of me has wanted to throw this away because it looks not right, obviously. But I'm like, it hasn't shriveled up and died yet. So I'm just gonna leave it and see what happens. So those were the oldest plants in my collection. Please let me know in the comments what are some of the plants that you've had for the longest and how long have you had them? I'd be totally curious to know. Thank you for watching to this point of the video. Please like it and subscribe to my channel. And one more thing, wherever you are and whatever your circumstances, bloom where you were planted, honey. See you in the next one. Bye.